Lathe tooling can be a quagmire of inserts, designations, and terminology. So let's talk about the various terms and labels that you might run into. To pick the right tool for your job, there are some designations on every tool to help you. Stick with me, there's a lot here. Every lathe tool has a letter, number, combination printed or etched on it somewhere. This is to help identify what kind of tool it is and what you might want to use it for. Tormach has a document that charts out all the different designations within the uniform system. It's a bit confusing, so I highly recommend checking out the link in the description. Here at Tormach, we use the ANSI designations, set up by the American National Standards Institute. There is another set of designations put up by ISO, or the International Organization for Standardization, but we'll stick to the ANSI version here. Let me show you how to read these designations. This tool is a standard turning tool. The first letter in the designation for turning tools defines the clamping system. This tool has an M, which means it's a multi-lock clamping system because there is both a clamp and a screw to hold the insert in place. The next letter defines the insert shape, which might be obvious if you already have an insert, but without an insert already clamped in, it might be hard to know what shape fits that tool. This tool has a T, which means it has a triangle insert. The next letter represents the clearance angle. This tool has an F, which means it has a zero degree end cutting edge angle on an offset shank. The next letter is for the insert rake angle. This tool has an N, so it's zero degrees. This letter refers to the hand of the tool. Again, this might be fairly obvious if you know your way around lathe tooling and there's an insert already clamped, but it can be helpful if all you have is the tool. This is a right-handed tool. The number here designates the shank height. So for this tool, it is a three quarters of an inch shank. The number after the dash defines the insert IC or the inscribed circle. An inscribed circle is the largest possible circle that can be drawn on the inside of a plane figure. So this number provides some more insight into the type of insert that this tool holds. This specific tool has an insert IC of 3 eighths of an inch. The last letter shows the tool's length. This tool has a C, which means it is five inches long. Now, there are different charts for turning tools, boring bars, turning and boring inserts, grooving and parting tools, threading tools, and threading tool inserts. So here's another tool that will utilize a different part. This tool is a boring bar. So we'll go to the boring bar chart. The first letter defines the shank. So S is for steel. The number designates the bar diameter. This bar lists 12, which is a 3 quarters of an inch diameter. The next letter defines the tool length, which in this case is 10 inches. The letter after the dash defines the clamping system. This tool has a D, which means it is also a double clamp tool. The next letter shows the shape of the insert that this tool will use. Here we see a C, so this boring bar has an 80 degree diamond shape insert. The clearance angle is defined by the L as an offset shank with a negative 5 degree side and end cutting edge. The rake angle is again N, or 0 degrees. Again, we have to define whether or not this is a right or left hand tool, and this one is a right handed tool, designated by the R. And the last number once again defines the insert IC. This tool holds inserts with an insert inscribed circle of 3 eighths of an inch. And that's it. So if you ever find a mystery cutter in your toolbox, or you're just trying to navigate what tool to buy next, use these designations to make sure you get exactly what you need and what will help you do the job. Thanks for watching. Check out all of our latest videos here. And for more metalworking tips, tricks, and stories, subscribe to our YouTube channel.